Hi children! Welcome to KFC and we are glad to have you join us for worship again. Today, we are going to do something very special. Do you know what the date is? Do you know? Trick question! It's not Christmas Day! It is 20th December. Close enough? But, be but more than celebrating just Christmas Day itself, this whole month is a special month. We want to remember this person, this good news, and we want to celebrate it. So let us turn to our Bible, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. Now, do you know who is this child that will be born to us? Yes, I'm sure all of you know who this child is. Now, this child was Jesus. Jesus was born to us many, many, many years ago. For what? He was born so that he can live like us humans. He lived and he knew how it was like to go through different sufferings. He knew what kind of struggles we might face in life. But more importantly, at the end of his life, he died for us. He died for our sins. But more than that, after he died, he didn't remain dead. He rose from the dead. That means he won over death, he won over sin. And in him, when we believe in Jesus, in Jesus, we are also victorious. We win over death and we win over sin. They have no hold over us. And that is the good news. And that is what we want to give thanks and praise God for today. For the Son that God sent to earth and for Him dying on the cross for us and raising from the dead. Okay, so the first song that we're going to sing today to celebrate Christmas and the good news is Mary's Boy Child. It is a familiar song, so if you're ready, let us stand up, put away everything that will distract you, and let us come and worship God and praise God together. Are you ready?
news. Let's go to God in prayer and thank Him for this wonderful gift. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so happy today, so happy to remember this great news that you have given to us in the form of a person. This greatest gift that was ever given to all mankind in all history, that is Jesus. We remember Jesus today and we celebrate Jesus. Help us to not keep this gift for ourselves, but to give this to other people as well so that everybody will come to know Jesus and be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next song we are going to sing is about the gift. The gift is Jesus. The good news. So let us sing and remember how we should give this gift to our friends and family.
Celebrate, and we want to continue to share with the people around us, so that they too might know and have this gift and have eternal life. Thank you, God. Help us to continue to grow in knowing you, but more importantly, in loving and obeying you. Thank you, God, for your word that teaches us every day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, children, have fun at class and learn a lot about God. Goodbye and see you next week. Hello, children. How are you today? I'm Auntie Angela. Trust you're all well. I know that sometimes we feel good, but sometimes we feel not so good. But whether we feel good or not, God is always the same. He's unchangeable. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He knows how we feel. He knows our heart that we are here to listen to Him, to receive His Word. Come, let's prepare our hearts for today's lesson. Shall we pray? Praying posture, children. Close your eyes and put your hands together. Dear God, You are the Almighty One. We know that You always love us and You, all, you are always there for us. So whether we are feeling good or feeling not so good, Lord, you are the same and you, you love us all the same. So Holy Spirit, speak to us even as we come here to listen to your word and to receive what you, have, what you want us to learn. So bless us, for we ask all this in Jesus' name. And all the children say, Amen. Children, with Christmas approaching, I have a question to ask you. What does Christmas mean? mean to you? So when people talk about Christmas, what comes to your mind? Is it about having a Christmas party? Perhaps it is, you know, we can throw a Christmas party, we can, we could be invited to a friend's party where we can have fun and enjoy ourselves. But is that all Christmas is about? Or is it all about Christmas light up? We can see this um, light up in hotels, in restaurants, in shopping center, as well as along maybe the major shopping belt. All right. Or is Christmas all about Christmas trees? We can have this at home, all right? Or is it about caroling? You know, at times we do hear carolers singing Christmas carols um, over television, over radio, or even in hospitals, or children's home. So we hear carolings, you know, to give us the, to cheer us on for the Christmas spirit, with the Christmas spirit. Or is Christmas all about giving and receiving present? Or is it about Santa Claus? Is it about unwrapping presents? Yes, all of us, we want to see what is inside the gift that was given to us. Okay, so all of us are curious. We want to see them. Is Christmas about Christmas get... Is it, sorry, is Christmas about family get together? It's good to see our uncles and aunties over Christmas dinner. Or is it about feasting? To have, to have a feast means that it's to have a meal together for special occasions. 
So we could have Christmas um, pudding, roast turkey, Christmas candy, or chocolate cakes. Is it about family outing? Perhaps during Christmas Day, some of us wants to go out, you know, to the amusement park. So is Christmas about family outing? You see, we have Christmas tree, we have um, roast turkey, we have carolers singing, we have party and presents. These are all good because it's the spirit of Christmas where there is love, joy, peace, hope and goodwill to all. But what is the true gift of Christmas? Our Bible lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, and chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And it's also taken from the book of Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. These are found in the New Testament. And kiddie children, you can get your, you can take out the, your Bible and read these passages, or you can uh, get a doubt to read to you for the younger children, all right? Let's find out what the true gift of Christmas is as taught to us in the Bible. We will now wash a puppet skit. And uh, I want you to watch because later on, I'm going to ask you questions. And children, just sit back and relax and let's watch the puppet skit. <laughs> A long, long time ago in the city of Nazareth, in a village, there lived a young woman named Mary, who was to be married to Joseph, who lived there too. Mary was a woman who obeyed God and has found favour in the sight of God. One day, while Mary was at home, an angel appeared to her. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will give birth to a son and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. Hearing this, Mary was very afraid. He could not believe what the angels had said, but she knew that nothing is impossible with God. So Mary trusted and obeyed God and said, I am the Lord's servant, and I am happy to have his wish come true through me. This is Joseph. Joseph was a righteous man. He was going to be married to Mary. Soon, Mary got pregnant through the Holy Spirit, just as the angel told her. Knowing Mary was with a child before they got married, Joseph wanted to divorce Mary secretly. Where did this baby come from? How did Mary get pregnant? Should I leave her? Oh dear, I am so confused. One night, when Joseph was asleep, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. The baby inside her is from the Holy Spirit and she will bring forth a son, and you shall name his Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Yes, I will obey the Lord. Mary, I will take you home as my wife. your attention. This is Caesar Augustus, the leader and the ruler of the Roman Empire. Listen carefully. He has something important to say. Everyone must go back to your own hometown to register your names. I want to make a count of all the people that live in each area. Oh no, that includes Mary and Joseph. They are now in the town of Nazareth and need to travel back to their hometown Bethlehem. 
Mary and Joseph travelled to Bethlehem by riding on a donkey. It would take them four to five days. It was a very long and tiring journey. They travelled through the desert and they tra also travelled through mountainous area. Wow, we are finally here! On reaching the town of Bethlehem, they found out that there were many, many people. It was almost dark and they were very tired. Mary and Joseph searched high and low for a room in an inn for them to rest. Hi, do you have a room for us to rest in? My wife is about to deliver a baby very soon. Go away, we have no room. Oh dear Joseph, we have nowhere to rest in. It's okay, I'm sure we will find a place soon. Let's continue looking. Hi, so sorry to disturb. Do you have any rooms available for us? No, all the rooms are full. It's just for one night. No room. Oh no, Joseph. What are we going to do? All the rooms are full. Don't worry, Mary. Oh, I see another innkeeper there. Let's go ask if there is any room for us. Hi, do you have any room for us? I'm sorry, we, I do not have any more rooms in the inn, but I have some space where the animals stay. How about staying in my stable? Yes, that would be great. Thank you. Soon, it was time for the baby to be born. And at that stable, on that very special day, Mary gave birth to Jesus. <coughs> Mary gave birth to Jesus and held him in her arms. Meanwhile, on the fields far, far away, there were shepherds taking care of their sheep at night. Suddenly, a light shone on them. They were frightened and the angel of the Lord appeared to them. The shepherds were terrified when they saw the angel. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news and great joy. Today in the town of David in Bethlehem, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. All of a sudden, there was lots of angels saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill to men. Come, let us go to Bethlehem and see for ourselves this wonderful news that the Lord has just told us about. Then, the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem and found Mary, Joseph and baby Jesus. They were excited and shouted, the Saviour is born! The shepherds were glorifying and praising God, and they went around telling what they have seen concerning Jesus. After Jesus' birth, three wise men from the east saw the bright shining star in the sky. The three wise men followed the star and it led them to King Herod. He was a bad king. He wanted to trick the wise men and use the wise men to find out where King Jesus was born. Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Upon hearing this, King Herod was troubled. Hmm, why is there another king? I should be the only king. King Herod was jealous and angry that there was a new king, baby Jesus. He wanted to find baby Jesus and kill him. Thus, 
King Herod secretly called for the wise men and found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. Immediately, King Herod sent the three wise men to Bethlehem to search for baby Jesus. Go, make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, let me know. Then I can go and worship him too. After listening to King Herod, the three wise men followed the star, which led them to baby Jesus. The wise men went into the manger. There, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped baby Jesus. Then the three wise men gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were very precious and expensive gifts. The three wise men did not return to King Herod and went home another way as they were warned in a dream not to return to King Herod. And this is the story of the birth of Jesus. You have enjoyed the skits and here are the questions see if you can answer them who told mary and joseph that the baby's name was to be jesus was it the angel the wise man or was it the shepherd so can you remember who told mary and joseph that the baby's name was to be jesus can i give you a few seconds to think about the answer who told the, you know, Mary and Joseph? Yeah, baby's name was to be Jesus. Okay, I'll, I'll show you the answer. It's the angel. All right, it's the angel. The next question. Who gave the order that Mary and Joseph were to go to Bethlehem? Was it the wise man? Was it the emperor? Or was it the angel? Remember somebody gave the order for everybody to go to bed to their hometown to register their name to be counted for the census so can you remember who gave the order for everybody to go to to their hometown and Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem because that's where that's the hometown of Joseph you got the answer okay I'll show you the answer it's the emperor all right, the answer is the emperor. The next question. How did Mary go to Bethlehem? How did Mary go to Bethlehem? Was it the ship that Mary sat on? Is she able to sit on the ship? Or was it the donkey? She sat on the donkey or she sat on a cow. So how did Mary go to Bethlehem? You got the answer? Maybe you can point to the answer or you can you can see out the answer. Okay, I'll reveal the answer. It's the donkey. During Jesus' time, the people normally walk, you know, on the, on the streets, you know, they, they walk or if they have to travel very far, they go, they sit on the, they travel on the donkey. Okay, next question. Who told the shepherds about Jesus? Can you remember who told the shepherds about Jesus? Was it the emperor who told the shepherds about Jesus? Or was it the wise man? Or an angel? So what is your answer? This is quite easy. Who told the shepherds about Jesus? I'll show you the answer. It's the angel. The angel told the shepherds about Jesus. Next question. What did the shepherds do after they saw baby Jesus? So after seeing the baby, after seeing baby Jesus, what did the shepherd do? Did they praise God and told others about Jesus? Okay, this is a bit tricky. Is it 
one answer is correct or both answers are correct or none of this. All right. So what did the shepherds do after they saw baby Jesus? It's actually both. Both the answers are correct. Okay. Next question. How did the wise men know that baby Jesus was born? How did the wise men know? Is it they saw a bright shining star in the sky and they followed the star? Or did they see a moon and they followed the moon? What is your answer? I give you some time to answer this question. Okay, I'll show you the answer. Is the star. The wise men saw the star and knew that the, a saviour is born, okay? The next one. What did the wise men do when they found Jesus? What did the wise men do when they found Jesus? They did not want to see Jesus and they went another way? Or they found Jesus and they worshipped him? So which is your answer? They went another way or they found Jesus and they worshipped him? I'll show you the answer. They found Jesus and they worshipped him. Next question. Who else can worship Jesus? Is it only the children or the adults? Are both correct answers? Who do you think can worship Jesus? The children and the adults or only children? Okay, I'll show you the answer. It's both, all of us, the children as well as the adult, we can worship Jesus. Okay, here are some ways that we can worship Jesus. We can sing praises to Him. That's what you did earlier on. That's one way of worshipping Jesus. We can pray to God. We thank Him for what He has done. We thank Him for who He is. Okay. And we can read the Bible. Reading the Bible is one way of worshipping God. And we can give our offering to God. Offering is an act of worship too. So these are the, some of the ways that we can worship Jesus. Now for the craft. Okay, the worksheets and the craft. Um, you can get an adult to help you to print this out. It's called Angels in the Sky. Six angels are hidden in the picture. So you try and find them and color, color them. All right, the next worksheet. Can you help the wise man? Follow the star to help the wise man find Jesus' house. So the wise man is at the top left-hand corner and Jesus' house is on the right bottom corner. So you can trace and trace Follow the stars to help the wise man find Jesus' house. This is a craft. This is a Christmas craft which you can try doing. All right. What you can do is you can get an adult to help you to print this out. And here is the step-by-step -step guide on how you can do the craft. You can cut out the star and you can put you know, the basket, the one in brown colour. Yes, you can put the basket. Then, you cut strips of paper, coloured paper, to put as hay for the, on top of the basket. Then you can um, have a white piece of paper and do exactly as what is on the picture and have baby Jesus. And this is the completed craft. So what can we learn from today's Bible lesson? What can we learn? We learn that God sent His Son, Jesus, to us. It's all about God's love. God is reaching out to us. God is reaching out to you. God is reaching out to me. God is reaching out to all of us. In John chapter 3, verse 16, it says that for God so loved the world, there's you and me and every one of us, God so loved the world that He gave 
His only son, Jesus, gave his son to us. That's how Jesus was born. God sent Jesus to be born in the world. Okay. That whoever believe in him will not die, but have eternal life. Eternal life, that means everlasting life. So in John 3.16, I repeat, it says, God so loved the world that he sent his only son to us, that when we believe in Jesus, we can have eternal life. You see, at first, God and us are together, but because of sin in our life, sin is doing things our way instead of God's way. And we make God sad when we do things our way. So sin separates us from God, as you can see from the picture. Man is on one side and God is on the other side. Sin separates us from God. And God has to send His Son, Jesus, to us. And in Jesus, we have forgiveness of sins. What are examples of sins that in our life? For example, lying, cheating, taking things without permission that make God sad, or disobeying our parents. These are sins in our life. And in Jesus, we have forgiveness of sin. When we receive Jesus, we have forgiveness of sin. And we are promised eternal life. And you look at this boy, he's crossing over because he believed in Jesus. He received Jesus into his life. He received Jesus to be his Savior and his Lord. So he's united with God the Father. Just as when we receive Jesus into our life, we are connected to God the Father. So Jesus is God's gift to us and it can never be taken away. It's the eternal life. Jesus is God's gift to us. All right? And that's why Jesus is the best gift. So the true gift of Christmas is, it is not about the Christmas tree, it is not about the Christmas light, it is not about presents, it's not about outing, it's not about partying. But the true gift of Christmas is, children, can you tell me what is the true gift of Christmas? The true gift of Christmas is Jesus. All right, Jesus is the true gift of Christmas that God gave to us. So I repeat, you know, God so loved us that He gave us His Son and we must believe. God gave us His Son and we must believe. We must believe in our heart that Jesus is God's Son, is a gift to us. And in believing, we have eternal life. So children, would you want to believe in Jesus? If you want to believe in Jesus, to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin, because in Jesus we have forgiveness of sin and we have eternal life. Would you want to receive Jesus into your life? Come, let's pray. Okay, let's pray to receive Jesus into our life. I want you to close your eyes. For those who want to receive Jesus into your life, I want you to close your eyes and repeat the prayer after me. All right? Say, Dear Jesus, I'm sorry that I've done wrong things. Forgive me of my sins. I now ask Jesus, to come into my life and be my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. So children, if you have said this prayer, go and tell the one who is beside you and the dog or your parents that you believe in Jesus and you just said the prayer to receive Jesus into your life. Go and tell them. Or when you come to Kiss for Christ Church, tell your teacher, I received Jesus into my life because I believe in Him. I believe that God sent Jesus to save me. Okay, children, come, let's all pray. We have a closing prayer before we end. Again, praying posture, close your eyes and put your hand together. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus into the world for us. 
we are glad that He came so that we can have eternal life. May our family have the peace of God in our hearts and may the joy of Jesus and the hope that we have in Jesus be with us all. In Jesus' name, and all the children say, Amen. Have a blessed Christmas, children. Goodbye.